Uh, well, I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's uh, it's a great honor to come back as a finalist, and uh, let's see. I mean, I've been practicing really well this this week, and very excited to play. Okay, thank you. Questions, David. Tennis.com. It was maybe a little bit of a tough end for you in Cincinnati, not feeling physically great. How are you feeling now, and how is your preparation been? Oh. Uh, you know, always trying to be 100% healthy, but it's always tough. But uh, I, I, uh, I'm doing everything possible to, to be ready. It's, it's looking great, so uh, I'm just going to take it uh, one step at a time and, and see how it goes. Okay. David? Pedro Waldstein, New York Times. You're, you're such a popular player, and people really pull for you, and they want you to win. One, my, my first question is, do you feel that? And is that is that a positive thing or does it bring pressure with it? Um, I I do feel that uh, especially when I uh, you know step on a tennis court and uh, most of the you know people cheering for me that's uh, a privilege. Um, it's uh, it's a positive thing. I don't think anyone would hate that, but uh, I do take it as a great energy. And uh, in Cincinnati, that did help me a lot to to make a comeback. So that was really amazing. Meredith Cash Insider, I think that's an NC Courage hat you're yes. wearing. Yes. Um, and I saw that you joined the ownership group earlier today. Uh, what went into that decision, and do you follow the team? Do you have a favorite player? Do you follow the NWSL, et cetera? Uh, finally, Naomi accepted me in the team. I've been trying to get in the team for years now. but. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's a great honor um, in, in so many ways. Um, first, um, it's a great team. Uh, I'm l still learning more about the team and about the, the league here in in, uh, in US. And definitely for me, the most important is supporting women's sports. And uh, it's a, as a, can I say a football fan, please? As a football fan, slash soccer. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to, to try to go and see some matches. And uh, if they let me play, I will definitely go and play. <laughs> but um, I'm, I've, when I met Stu the first uh, day, I told him, like, I'm, I'm really interested. I want to I wanna get involved in, in something in, in soccer. And uh, um, hopefully we'll, we'll follow more the team. I'm very excited. Uh, I will try to get more to know more the team, definitely. Uh, but yeah, there's something I'm, it's very personal for me. So I'm very, very excited about it. Russell, do you have a question? Ons, Russell Fuller from the BBC. You played just the one tournament since Wimbledon before this US Open. Did you feel as if you just needed time to decompress, we might say, just get away from tennis and get over the <coughs> disappointment of Wimbledon? 100%. Um, I honestly wasn't ready to play in Montreal. I wasn't ready to come back uh, soon on tour because I felt like I needed time for myself. Um, you know, they say time heals, so I'm, I'm still waiting a bit. The, the Wimbledon loss still hurts, but uh, it's it's much better than a month ago for sure. Um, yeah, just uh, I think um, I'm 28 years old now. I've learned from the mistakes of playing, playing, playing tournaments all the time. So I think I was really proud of myself to just take a step back, uh, ha enjoy time with my family, and, and get ready for the next uh, tournaments. Cindy. Hi, Hans. Uh, Cindy Schmerler, International New York Times. Um, first of all, you sound a little congested. Could we just ask, are you healthy? Is everything fine? That's the first. That's the American AC killed uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Blame us, of course. Um, and uh, it, it appears very possible that the WTA finals will be played in Riyadh. And I'm wondering what your thoughts on that are. Will you go, if, assuming that you are qualified? Um, and, and what kind of what you're thinking about that? Um, you know, as an Arab player, <laughs> I'm very excited to to be there. I am someone that uh, pushing for a change. They're pushing to give more and more opportunities, especially for women. And um, I know in Saudi they're they're changing things and they're evolving. So uh, I've been there uh, last year. Uh, f to um, to give it like a speech and interview there and it was very nice meeting a lot of amazing women there and for me uh, uh, I was trying to push for to to have something tennis there in 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 uh, in Saudi I think it's a great step I think it's uh, it's something that it could help um, uh, the Arab board to to have more tennis players to to get more involved in sports 
Um, and yeah, if they play there and hopefully if I qualify, it will be a great uh, honor and opportunity for me to go and play there, especially meeting uh, a lot of women that I, they told me they look up to me. So that will be a great opportunity for me to meet them and, and, uh, and speak to them. And, and why not, you know, just uh, do a lot of great things together. Ava and then Court. Um, Ava Wallace, the Washington Post. I wanted to ask, I, I, as you know, there are a ton of juniors who kind of, unlike yourself, don't make a successful transition to the pros. What do you feel like is the common thread between the ones that do make it and can kind of foster a, a, a long-lasting career? Um, well, I mean, I think being a tennis player, you always have like a different path, you know. Some players, they, uh, they did... Uh, they did not play juniors, but then they played good uh, in professional. And some, they did play good in juniors, and then they went also good or bad. But for me, I think my, my case was kind of uh, uh, particular for me because of my game. You know, my game, I have a lot of variety. Uh, I, for me, it was tough to adapt to the professional level because I... I uh, if, if you play like drop shot and silly in juniors, that could work, you know, but not with someone professional that has a lot of experience than you. That that was kind of tough for me. So adapting it to just sticking to one choice of shot and knowing when to hit that shot, that uh, when I started to play good in, in a professional um, uh, tennis. So, um, I mean, I don't know for, for the others, to, to, to be honest with you, but definitely uh, I feel like the combination, the perfect combination would be to play juniors a little bit and then start playing uh, ITFs and, and, uh, and uh, WTAs uh, as soon as you can. Okay. Court, then Willie. Uh, Courtney, Glenn, WTA. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You practiced with Marquetta um, before the tournament, and I'm curious, is that just part of trying to exercise those demons of Wimbledon or anything like that? Or Try to hit him. Well, it did not work. Um, no, I just, uh, I have always practiced with her. Uh, she's honestly a great person, even outside the court, and uh, um, we... We always try to, you know, especially she's a lefty, so you set up some practices with lefties, uh, and uh, she's she's fun to practice with. So it was a, a great honor to practice with Wimbledon champion this year, and uh, <laughs> I was supposed to practice with the ex Wimbledon champion t today, but uh, yeah, good good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> really? Willie Weinbaum from ESPN. What are your observations on Coco Goff's development as a player? Um, honestly, very happy for her uh, that she, she won in Cincinnati. I feel like she's... Uh, I don't think a lot of things changed in her in her tennis. Uh, I think uh, and everybody's always have talked about her forehand, and I don't see nothing wrong with her forehand, you know, just a small things that uh, she, she adapted, you know, as, as a tennis player, but... Uh, she's she's a great athlete, and um, I, I think she maybe the attitude or the mentality changed. That maybe she believes more in herself during the uh, matches, uh, and and that's great. You know, she she got the help that she needed, and uh, I'm really happy for her. You know, she at least she's she's showing that she won't change, she wants to win, and that's really amazing. Okay, we have time for one more. Hi, Haley Fuller, USOpen.org. Um, building off on the NC Courage, I was wondering, with 50 years of equal prize money at the U.S. Open, that anniversary being celebrated right now, what's it like to invest in women's sports right now in this moment? Um, it's a very good coincidence, you know, for me. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very happy. I, I always try to, to push for, for women's uh, rights. I, I believe that we deserve more. And especially in tennis, you know, it's great that we have equal prize money at the Grand Slams, but I feel like other tournaments, uh, it needs to be uh, better, for sure. Uh, we... We're playing great tennis. We had great generations. Uh, and... Um, Honestly, I see uh, women's soccer is going that way. So tough coming out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for me to be part of it, it's, uh, it's a great honor. Uh, and definitely uh, loved watching the World Cup uh, and definitely will be rooting uh, for NC Courage right now. Uh, I don't know what's your favorite team, but uh, that's my team. 